What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be talking about the top five kinds of people that are at risk of being shanked up, stabbed up, whatever you want to call it, in the state penitentiary. I know a lot of people, they watch movies, and they say to yourself, God, I do not want to go to prison and get shanked. I do not want to go to prison and get raped. And, you know, even though these things do happen, they do happen on a regular basis in the United States. But for the most part, the majority of people getting locked up, they do not have to worry about these things, okay? Because there's certain people that are at risk of getting stabbed on a regular basis. And I'm about to name them right now. But if you're just some average Joe Smo, you know, you're not affiliated with any of this stuff that I'm going to be talking about, your chances of getting stabbed are very low. Your chances of being raped are very low. Okay, there's a lot, a lot of homosexuals in prison that are giving that stuff up on a regular basis. Okay, so the first person on the list, and everyone already knows this for the most part, okay, is child molesters, sex offenders. They are always going to be at risk of being stabbed up or possibly killed in crazy different ways, all right? And yes, in a lot of institutions, a lot of prisons, they do put these kind of guys into PC, but I have been in prisons where they don't go to PC, okay? And you also gotta remember, there's a lot of inmates that are locked up that have been sexually assaulted when they were younger, or, you know, they seen their mother or their sister go through this kind of sexual abuse, and this stuff builds up over time, and they build a hate towards them, okay? They build a hate towards these individuals, and at any chance, that they can get some revenge on them, especially if they're facing a lot of time already. They're going to get them, and they're not going to have any remorse. And almost everyone that commits these crimes on these child molesters or pedophiles, whatever the case is, in their mind, they're saying to themselves, hey, I'm going to be praised for it. This stuff is actually what inmates will salute to them for doing. You know what I mean? Oh, you, you took out a child molester? That's what's up, dog. You know what I mean? I'm proud of you. And that's how it goes in the penitentiary. So yes, child molesters, sex offenders, hey, you know what time it is. Green light special, 24-7. That's the raw truth of how the penitentiary system works. Now, number two, believe it or not, in prison there are bullies, okay? There are bullies that will pick on little people, younger guys. They will beat them up on a regular basis, take their food, whatever the case is. And these little guys, okay, these little guys, especially the ones that got maybe 10, 12 years left to do, uh, they're going to say to themselves one time, they're going to have a breaking point. Okay, Everybody has a breaking point, and a lot of people don't check in. They don't check in. They are going to handle the situation appropriately. And these guys that have been being picked on on a regular basis, they're going to go buy themselves a little steel. They're going to go buy themselves a shank, and they're going to wait for the perfect moment to stop that bullying right in its tracks. They're going to say to themselves, man, I got 12 more years, and I ain't no way I'm going to let this freaking dude keep doing what he's doing to me. So yeah, these guys have been sitting there in fear for months and months, just stressing and worrying about the next day that you're going to come in the cell, the bully's going to come in the cell and pick on them again. Hey, guess what? One of these days might be your last time bullying someone. And even though they're young, they're still capable of going to buy a shank and putting you in your place very quick. I know me, personally, okay, back in the day when I first went to prison, if I had someone constantly threaten me, constantly beat me up, I'm going to get paid back. And, it, and if I can't do it with my hands, I'm going to get a weapon. That's just how I was when I was younger. And I had that mindset. I said, if anybody messes with me, man, I swear to God, I'm going to go buy me a shank. I swear to God, I'm going to get my homeboy to make me the sharpest shank he's ever made in his life. You know what I mean? And that's the mentality I had. And there's a lot of young guys just like me that are sitting in the penitentiary with the same mentality. Keep pushing that young man's buttons. He's going to go buy himself a shank and put some steel up in you, man. I'm telling you. Telling you, it happens on a regular basis. Now, number three, you are at risk of being stabbed. If you are starting stuff with someone that might have 20 years uh, or life, okay? These guys that have 20 years or life, they, that's their home. That's their home. I, my homeboy Grizzy told a story about his homeboy Rambo, okay? He didn't have much time left, but he got shanked up and killed in the prison cell because he was messing with someone that had, I, I believe it was life, okay? And of course, these lifers. This is their home. You know, these guys that have 20 years or even 15 years, okay? They get in a fight. Let's say they get in a fight with someone that only has like three years left. And the guy that has three years left beat the hell out of them. You think that they're going to let that slide? You think that the, their home that they live in, they just lost a lot of respect because they got beat the hell out of by this young buck that only has three years left. You think they're going to let that slide? They're going to go back in their cell 
and everything's going to be cooking up in their mind. They're like, okay, I cannot let this slide. How am I going to get at him? What am I going to do? I have to have, I demand respect in penitentiary. I still got 20, 30 years left to do. I can't let this slide. They're going to come back at you and put about 40 holes in your rib cage. That's how it is, man. Uh, people that have a lot of time, you never know what they will do, okay? They have stress and anxiety built up over years, and sometimes they black out. They'll black out and not care about anything. They're like, man, I'm already 40 years old. I'm sentenced to 20 years. By the time I get out, there's not going to be anything for me. This is my home, and I'm going to live up to the prison mentality, and I'm going to shank anyone that gets in my way. I mean, put yourself in their shoes. You, let's say you're 35 years old, 40 years old, maybe even 45 years old, and you got sentenced to 20 years in prison. That's a death sentence, man. You don't know if you're going to make it out alive. So what are you going to do if you get punked down? You know, that's your home. Are you going to live with the reputation that you got punked down for the rest of your bid? Uh, you, you know, pretty much the rest of your life? No, you're not. You're not going to you're not going to allow that to happen. It's, it's just simple facts. The majority of the time, the people that are in that type of scenario that I just explained, they're going to come back at you with some steel. It doesn't matter who you are, who you're affiliated to. They're going to come back at you and make sure that they get that respect. That they demand independent century happens all time the time now number four okay everyone knows this pretty much as well snitches you know snitches get stitches you know that that is the code of conduct in the penitentiary and a lot of these snitches they go around population people have no earthly idea that they were working with informants or anything on the streets you know ci any of that stuff they don't have any idea but some institutions these correctional officers will put your business out there on jump street okay and once people find out that you have been dropping dime or uh, testifying on your co-defendant, anything, man, anything of that nature. And I'll tell you what, that's another that's another video for another day. People have co-Ds, co-defendants, okay? Let's say I get locked up with my homeboy, all right? And I decide to roll on him in the courtroom. That homeboy is going to be in the system with you, too. You don't think he's going to spread rumors all over the system and let people know who dropped down on him and where he's doing time at. A lot of these guys, they will snitch and not think anything of it. They'll think no one's going to know. Well, I'll tell you right now, people eventually find out. There's many different ways that people can find out if you've been a snitch at any point in your life. And sometimes it might take longer or shorter. It depends for people to figure out what you're really about. But when they do, okay, I can guarantee you, you're going to have to be looking behind your back. 24 7 because there are inmates that do not stand for that snitching stuff so yeah number four snitching man y'all already know that though y'all already know y'all are brilliant audience members now number five and this person is probably at risk of being stabbed much more than even a child molester or snitch and this is the facts of life okay and that is being affiliated with some kind of gang simple facts child molesters are usually in pc Snitches, they're probably in PC. Gangbangers, they're not in PC. They're in population, okay? And they're surrounded by rival gang members on the regular basis. People that are in gangs in the street, what do they pick up? They pick up weapons. They got guns and bats, whatever the case is. In prison, they pick up shanks and they stay with them. Gangbanging in prison is probably one of the most dangerous things that you can do while locked up. Everyone thinks gangbanging is cool on the streets. It, it does. It looks cool. It looks aggressive it looks appealing okay but i'm here to tell you man there's nothing appealing about it when you step foot in the penitentiary prison and gangs go hand in hand they are like best friends most of the horror stories that you see on youtube or any kind of you know live feed or whatever you know whatever kind of hidden dark web website you might see where people are getting shanked up chances are 90 percent of the time it is because of gang banging it's all there is to it. And you got to always remember, there are shot callers that will put green lights on people. And man, you know, you might not even want to stab them. But just because they gave out the order, you are going to have to go do it. Or else they're going to do it to you. Blood in, blood out. That's how it goes. You don't want to follow those rules and regulations 100% of the time. Man, I feel sorry for you, my friend. You know, a lot of these people, they get into gangs on the streets and they're saying, you know what, well, I ain't never going to go to penitentiary. I ain't never going to go to Penn Century. That ain't going to happen to me. I'm just going to live this gang life out here in the streets. It's going to be all sweet. Women, jewelry, and money. You know, the fast life. 
But I'm telling you, mark my words. You go to the penitentiary, that stuff, all that stuff goes out the window. You are going to be putting in work. That gang is going to become a job. You're going to become almost like an assassin, for real. So in my book, that is the top five people that are at risk of being shanked, okay? Uh, sexual assaults, child molesters, uh, snitches, people that are gang banging, people that might have gotten a fight with a lifer or someone that's doing a lot of time and beat them up. They will come back with a vengeance. Mark my words. Uh, bullies. Bullies, they have no earthly idea that they're at risk, but when it happens, it happens, okay? The people getting bullied are going to get fed up with this sooner or later. And also one that didn't really make the list, but it should have been on there, is gambling. Okay, you get caught cheating or not paying a debt. Yes, you are at risk of being stabbed up. But typically, those people will try everything that they can to get their money from you, okay, without killing you. They want their money. They don't want to kill you. They just want their freaking money, you know what I mean? So most times, people that go through these situations with gambling, they're either going to get beat up on a regular basis or they're going to be threatened until they get their freaking money. Now, this is another thing I want to talk about. On my Patreon, I drop a lot of videos of crazy prisons all over the world. Okay, all over the world. And I'll tell you right now, the United States is a freaking cakewalk. I have seen videos of people getting... You know, I'm going to tell you right now where I think is the most dangerous prison to ever be in. Okay, and that is in Brazil. Almost every freaking super, I'm talking about graphic videos where I can't even almost finish watching. I can only watch it once because it's that freaking treacherous, okay? And those videos come from freaking Brazil. Those penitentiaries out there in Brazil, even out in the streets, the gang life out there is so crazy, man, you know? I can honestly say I don't think I'll ever go visit Brazil. I don't care how many big booty janks are out there. I ain't going to Brazil, my friend. That place is nuts. You really want to have a good eye opener on the United States penal system and how sweet it is. Go look at other prisons over the world, okay? There is so much more violence in prisons in other places of the world that will make you be like, damn. I'm proud to be an American convict, you know? Lock me up. Let me get some ramens and lay back. You know what I mean? But the main point of this video, okay, the main point of this video is to let people know, even though stabbings and rapes and stuff like that do happen, the typical person, okay, they're just minding their business, probably only buying like $20 of food a month. Uh, these guys do not have to worry about this stuff, okay, because they are minding their business. They're not getting caught up in the mix. You will be able to survive prison. You might get in a bunch of fights, but for the most part, when it comes to being shanked up or stabbed, I mean, just go look at the statistics, okay? There's way over half of the people that go to prison come out and they've never been stabbed or raped. The majority of people that go through this type of stuff is gangbangers, man, for real. So maybe this video will touch someone out there that is possibly gangbanging or something along those lines. Look. And you can always, look, most people that are gangbanging, when they turn like 50 years, that stuff is done. At 40 years old, that stuff is done. They'll, the typical gangbanger that's been, you know, in the gang life for a long time, when they grow up, okay, when they grow up, they'll look back and say, what the hell was I thinking? You know what I mean? What the hell was I thinking? Why was I born and raised into this bull crap? You start, when you get older, you start to realize that life, is much more important than violence. There's so much better things in life like love. Man, you know how much better your life is gonna be when you learn to love people, man. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. If you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please do so now. And don't forget to check out all the links in the description of the video. Add me up on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. I've been gaming a lot more lately and uh, go check out my merchandise on teespring i'm about to be making some new t-shirts here in a little bit and don't forget to check out the patreon man i got some vicious videos on there that you probably won't even be able to watch for real it's absolutely intense and as always i want to salute every last one of y'all who have been supporting me since the beginning and everyone who is just now starting to hit that subscribe button my prayers go out to families that have loved ones that are locked up man you don't know what's going on with them i pray that they get home quick and safely and I also pray that they change your ways and never go back again and that's a video that's coming in the near future okay how did I stay out how did I get off probation I'm gonna make a video explaining all the key ways to stay out of lockup 